Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at game emulation on the M1 Ultra, which is Apple's fastest chip to date. And this is really important because as you might know, the M1 doesn't have that many games that can run on the system. And so game emulation can potentially open the door up to thousands of games on dozens of different systems. And today we're going to be focusing on higher end games, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, Wii and GameCube. And that's because we already know that the base M1 is perfectly capable of running most of the retro games that you know and love. However, we're going to be pushing the limits of what's currently capable on the M1 chip and on Mac OS as well. So first up we're going to be testing out PlayStation 3 emulation running through RPCS3 and this has recently had a Mac release and this emulator is still in alpha and it was only very recently ported to Mac OS. On top of emulating the PlayStation 3, RPCS3 also has to make use of two translation layers. Molten VK translates Vulcan Graphics API into the Mac compatible Metal Graphics API. And secondly, because this emulator uses the Intel build, it uses the Rosetta 2 translation layer in order for the software to work on the ARM instruction set. Thankfully, we can see that Tekken Tag Tournament 2 runs virtually flawlessly at 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. I'll say that most of the time you won't notice any graphical issues, however the odd thing might turn up, for example here the shadows aren't being displayed correctly, but this doesn't seem to affect gameplay at all. So next up is the From Software game Demon's Souls. So if you play the original you'll know that the game is capped at 30 frames per second, however it is possible to use game patches in order to raise the frame rate cap to 60 frames per second, and also there were some graphical issues which can be fixed with mods. For example the shield might not display correctly, however there is a patch file which you can download which I'm going to leave a link to in the description. So you can see that this game runs pretty flawlessly at 60 frames per second at 4K resolution. So next up is Persona 5, we're running this at 4K and it's reaching 60 frames per second. This originally ran at 30 frames per second but you can apply a game patch to raise the frame rate cap to 60. In the combat sections it works pretty much consistently at 60 frames per second. For some reason in the exploration sections it dips down into the 40s, however this doesn't really affect gameplay very much. So this game is definitely a great addition to the M1 compatibility lineup and that's because there aren't that many recent JRPGs that work on the M1 Mac. So the next game is Ninja Gaiden Sigma. So this was released in 2007 and it's a port of the original 2004 Xbox game. This is definitely one of the smoothest PlayStation 3 experiences on the M1 Mac and it can run at 60 frames per second at 4K with virtually no frame drops at all. Compared to some other games on the list, it's relatively low end being a port of an older title and it's likely that emulating the PlayStation 3 version is gonna run much better than trying to shoehorn the Windows version onto the M1 Mac. So next up we're going to be running Uncharted. So this is definitely one of the most challenging games for the PlayStation 3 to run and it's quite difficult for RPCS3 on Mac to be able to keep up. So we're running this at the original resolution of 720p and it seems to perform fine on the kind of smaller exploration areas. However in open areas with lots of combat you can see that the frame rate can dip to as low as 15 FPS and you can definitely feel it especially when you're trying to aim a gun. Despite the poor performance, I'll definitely say that Uncharted is playable. That's because it was originally designed to run at 30 FPS. However, this game could really benefit from some further optimization. So next up is Bayonetta, which is the 2009 Platinum game. And here we're running this at 1080p. So I'm aware that some people have managed to get the Windows version of Bayonetta working on the M1 Mac, but I haven't been successful so far. However, it seems to run okay through this PS3 emulator. The game mostly hovers around 50 to 60 FPS, but it can go as low as 30 FPS. So the next game in the list is God of War 3. So this is one of the most demanding games for the PlayStation 3 and unfortunately it doesn't seem to run that well on RPCS3 on the Mac OS version. In order to reach a playable frame rate, I've also applied several game patches which disable some extra graphical effects. For example, disabling anti-aliasing, motion blur, substantially improve the frame rate of the game. So this game is running at 720p. However, even on Apple's most powerful chip, we're only reaching around 30 to 40 40 FPS. And also lowering the graphical settings has a pretty big impact on the visual quality and some sections of the game become completely unplayable due to the performance hacks that we've used. So I definitely wouldn't recommend playing God of War 3 on RPCS3 on Mac. There are other God of War experiences which are going to be better on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. For example, you can play the Windows port of the recent God of War 2018 running through Crossover. Alternatively, you can play the PlayStation 2 era versions of the game. 
This is running through Telecrinkle's port of PCSXT, which only recently received support for the Metal Graphics API. And here we're running the game God of War 2, and unfortunately it's not running at a very high frame rate. Here I'm trying to test the game at 4K, and it's only running around 35 to 40 FPS. And if I bring the resolution down to its native PS2 480p, the game still doesn't run at full speed. What's interesting is that if we try to run the God of War collection, which contains God of War 2, through RPCS3, the PS3 emulator, then we're actually going to get much closer to 60 frames per second and a much more enjoyable frame rate. Here the game is running at 720p and it's almost reaching 60 frames per second. The game also feels much more responsive and doesn't have as many slowdowns or frame drops. Similarly here, I'm trying to run the PlayStation 2 version of Shadow of the Colossus, and I'm trying to run this at 720p, and this doesn't quite reach 100% speed, so there's a lot of slowdown. However, if I run the re-release through RPCS3 and also disable anti-aliasing, bloom, and motion blur, then we're gonna get a very close to 60 frames per second experience. So this is running at 720p, and even during the big huge boss battles, we're running around 45 to 55 FPS, which is far better than what the PlayStation 2 emulator can do. So next up is one of my favorite games, Katamari Damacy for the PS2. And this game pretty much runs perfectly on PCSX2. We're able to get a really solid 60 frames per second at 4K. And this is pretty cool considering how many objects are on the screen at once and how much the level expands as you collect more and more objects into your Katamari ball. So last up, we're gonna look at GameCube and Wii emulation through Dolphin. So Dolphin is one of the best performing emulators on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. It has a native ARM version. And here we're testing Rogue Squadron 2, which is one of the most challenging games to run on the GameCube. Here again, we're running at 4K and we're reaching a solid 60 frames per second. So one of the great benefits of emulating older games is that you can really pump up the resolution. And the M1 Ultra is definitely able to keep up even at 4K. Here we're going to be running another GameCube game called Auto Modelista, which is a racing game. And we're running this again at 4K. This is running at a solid 60 frames per second with no slowdown at all. It's actually possible to get the same performance on the base M1. However, with the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, you're much more likely to actually pair this with a 4K display. As you can see, there's lots of optimization that's left to be done on these high-end emulators on the M1 Mac. And in a way, I've cherry-picked some of the videos that I've demonstrated today. A lot of the games that I tried on RPCS3, for example, didn't actually boot up to begin with. And so there's a lot of work left to be done. Also, it'll be great once RPCS3 and PCSX2 get native ARM builds, which is gonna remove the need for the Rosetta 2 translation layer and improve performance and compatibility all around. And notably, we are also missing some very high-end game emulators. For example, for example, we don't have Yuzu or Switch emulation at all, and we have no way of emulating Wii U games running through the CMU emulator, and this is all really down to developer interest. If someone wanted to port those emulators to the M1 Mac, then I'm sure that it would be possible to do. It's just a question of how much interest there is, both on the player side and also on the developer side too. Also, I'm aware that most people are not going to buy an M1 Ultra just to do some game emulation. However, what's interesting is that the M1 Ultra's power is definitely going to trickle down into the next generation of Apple Silicon Macs, and you might see some of the M1 Ultra's power appear in the next refresh of, say, the MacBook Air. So it's interesting to see what kind of performance and compatibility that device might have. If you want to check out tutorials about how to get any of these emulators working on the M1 Mac, I have a full playlist which also includes tutorials for systems like the PSP, the Game Boy Advance, the 3DS, the original Xbox, etc. So make sure to check out the link in the description for that playlist. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.